Hello, my mathematicians. This is Ms. Foster with level four of her introduction to multiplication and division. So far, we've learned about the basic concepts of multiplication and division, and we've also learned how to multiply with the factors 0, 1, 2, 5, 10, 3, and 4. My friends, once you know how, you need to make multiplication your friend. You need to make the multiplication facts your friend. And you need to push yourself to use the strongest possible strategies. Not by, if you're doing 4 times 8, writing 4 8 times. Not just always doing repeated addition. I've had 4th graders who think they're just going to use tally marks to do all their multiplication for the rest of their lives. No, no, my blessings, not you. The real challenge here is to use those strong, mighty strategies that are based on patterns and connections and relationships, especially using, if we're close to 10, using 10 as a factor and taking some away. If we're close to 5, make, maybe using 5 as a factor and then adding the more. So many great strategies. Go rewatch those videos if you want to see them. But then what's important is that you just have to get friendly with multiplication and basic multiplication facts. And the great news is that the very best way for you to do that is to play. Now, if your parents are watching with you, and if you're not, maybe go get them. Um, parents, it is the work of children to play. They play when they work, and they work when they play. And this means that they need to play a lot of multiplication. Now, I have a huge list, both here and in the documents I sent you, and of many, many fabulous math games that will push you into really being visual with math and thinking about those relationships. We have how close to 100? Oh my goodness, I have a version I will give you later where we go up to 200 and maybe even 256. Ah, exciting. This is a cooperative game. It's so much fun. Circles and stars, very visual, and you will also have the added luxury of having your adult teach you how to make a star like this. Down, up to the middle, straight across, down, and up. This is a life skill, children. You need to learn this. Parents, teach your kids. Like, teach them. Okay. Here's another one that really gets into both area and array models. You might use some graph paper or grid paper for that. Here's a fun one called Big Bad Wolf. I haven't played this one very much either. It's bowl of fact. You might be doing multiplication, but you might also practice addition and subtraction, and you need to have all those operations available to you. Shut the box is an interesting and fun one. Box it is one that I don't have a link for you, but I included my game board in the PDF that I sent you. And then my absolute favorite of all time game, Tic-Tac-Toe Products, which I love so much that I made a special version just for you to help you practice the multiplication you've been learning. And because it's my favorite game, I want to make sure that you know how to play it. So this is Tic-Tac-Toe Products, and each player needs to have their own game pieces. These can be very small Legos that are all the same color. They could be different kinds of dried beans from out of the kitchen. One of you could have pennies, and one of you could have nickels. You just need a handful of stuff. In class, we would have used those charming and fun little baubles. So I made some baubles for us here. You're also going to need two paper clips and the game board, which is included in the PDF I sent you. To begin the game, each player puts one paper clip so that it's surrounding one factor. Now, the black factors can have two paper clips on them. The red factors are only allowed to have one. It does not matter where you put them to begin with necessarily, although there might be strategy that you get into later. But I'll go first, I'm playing green, and once you've put yours on five and I've put mine on seven, I must move one paper clip. Hmm. I'm going to move this paper clip to ten. And then I have to tell you the product of five times ten. But more than that, I need to explain to you my strategy that is strong. So I can tell you skip counting, but if somebody's skip counting with you, you say, Mm, tell me another way that's based on relationships. Let's move from skip counting to something harder. So I might say to you, well, I use place value. I know that five times one is five. And if I put a zero in the single ones place, it'll bump it on over into the tens place. So five times 10 is 50. Now, whoever you're playing against, they have to agree with you that you're right. And if you are right, you get to that 50 spot. 
your goal is to get four in a row. Now let's say you come along and you're like, huh, well, I can see that if I don't take 60 right here, she's going to be able to get four in a row right there. So I'm going to move this paper clip to six. And then maybe you will tell me that six times 10 is 60 because of place value. And if six times one is six, then we just throw that zero into the single ones place and bunk it over into the tens place. So six times 10 is 60. And I have to agree with you. And phooey, phooey, took my strategy. Hmm. Well, I can still get four in a row this way, but I don't know six times anything that equals 28. Huh. Now, I can't do six times six. It's not, oh, it is on here. This is the one, the one thing that you could choose to say, um, I'm going to do six times six, and you and your parents can work on that. But let's pretend you don't want to do that right there, because there's another way to do it. So instead of putting them both on six, I'm going to look around that board, and I'm going to say, all right, fine. I'm going to go to a different part of the board and do 6 times 1, which is 6, because any number times 1 is itself, so 6 times 1 is 6, and you will agree with me. And then you will say, hmm, I can only move one paper clip. I think that I would like to do something that will get me close to my other one, but I can't seem to keep it. Maybe you choose this time to go 6 times 7, and you can tell me that any number times itself is itself, so 7 times 1 is seven. And I might say, aha, they've left me an opening. I'm going to do one times five is five because any number times itself is itself. Any number times one is itself. That's what it was. I apologize. I got too excited there. So now I've got two in a row. You might want to think, hmm, I'm going to block her right now. <gasps> you blocked me? <gasps> well, hmm, I'm going to move this to 10 because one times 10 is 10. Any number times itself is 10. And you might say, oh, fine. Well, now maybe you're going to say, I need to start thinking about my strategy here. Where can, ooh, if you have 90 right there, you should totally do 9 times 10. Don't you think so? Because any number times itself is, I'm sorry, any number times 1 is itself. And if you're multiplying times 10, you can move place value and use a 0 to knock that, that single 1 into the 10s place. So 9 times 10 is 90. Hmm. Now, I want to block you somewhere here, but I can't do two or three in the next move because I only am allowed to move one paper clip. So I'm going to take this paper clip and move it right here because I know that two times nine is the same as nine plus nine, and nine plus one is 18. So two times nine is 18. Ha, do you see how I'm sharing that strategy with a relationship? That's what we're looking for. And you might think, well, fiddlesticks, now you have to make a decision. If you don't get 16, I'm sorry, 27, then I might go there. 27? What times 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 10 is 27? Huh, wait a minute. 3 times 10 is 30. And 30 minus 3 is 27. <gasps> Did you see how you just used division to figure out that putting this right here means that you will be able to block me again? Why did you do that? Ugh. Don't you worry. I'm going to get you because you know what I'm going to do. I'm going to do 3 times 1 is 3 because any number times 1 is itself. And I just blocked you there. Oh my goodness, this is getting cutthroat. Now, of course, you will probably say, oh, I don't care what you're doing, Miss Foster. I'm going to put that there because 3 times 5 is 15. 5, 10, 15 in your face, Miss Foster. And I've run out of playing pieces. Now, if you run out of playing pieces at home, you should totally go get more playing pieces. The first person to get um, four in a row is the person who wins. And that's how you play this game. And it's really tricky because you, did you see the strategy and how sometimes you needed to use that 10 to get to the 27 or division even. Oh my goodness. So much to think about. So my friends, your job now is to play, play, play. And every day I want you to play at least one game for at least 15 minutes. That means you might play it through more than once. If you play all of these games for 15 minutes each, and then you do that all again, and then you do that all again, 
you will start becoming so familiar, so friendly with multiplication, that if someone says to you, hey, what's three times four? You'll be off, yeah, 12, because I've just done it like a million times playing tic-tac-toe products. And if someone says to you, well, what about nine times three? You're like, oh, yeah, let me tell you about that one time when Miss Foster was going to win, but then I figured out that three times 10 is 30, and 30 minus three is 27, so three times nine must be 27, and then I totally blocked her. That's why I know that three times nine is 27. You guys, you will be so mighty and powerful in math. I just, I'm so excited for the freedom you're going to have. And how fun is this? Your math teacher is telling you that you have to play a lot of games. You must. That is your assignment. And parents, I mean, kids, go get your parent if you need to. But parents, you have to play math games with your kids. I am not sorry about that. Have so much fun playing math together, you guys. I'm a little jealous of you. Hmm. Don't worry. I've got my own kids. I'll go play math with them. Thanks for playing math with me, guys. Have so much fun playing all the math. Bye-bye for now.